Welcome to St Paul's on this lovely, sunny, fresh morning. Um, my name's Kath and I'm one of the team here. Um, today we'll be continuing our theme of growing God's kingdom. And this week we'll be uh, talking a little bit about the um, grapevine. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. It's a reading from John's Gospel. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears no, no fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the words that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So, as I start this reflection on this passage, um, I have a confession to make. I hate gardening. When I was a child, I was given jobs in the garden to earn my pocket money, mainly mowing lawns and weeding. Oh, so much weeding. On the flip side, however, my husband Peter loves gardening. He has a real passion for it. And as I was preparing for today, I asked him what he, he loved about gardening. He said he liked the challenge, sometimes trying to go, grow plants which do not respond to his tender loving care. The creativity and the joy of the harvest, whether it be in terms of flowers, fruit or vegetables, he also likened it to doing God's work. The point is, Peter loves his garden and the plants within it. He gives the plants the best chance to flourish and grow. Sometimes he's disappointed, but he doesn't stop loving and caring for the plants. Sometimes his time and care are well rewarded as the plants grow fruit. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about wilding, so it might be a bit counterintuitive to be talking about gardening. I can honestly say that Peter's garden is not beautifully manicured. It has bits where there is wilding, but there are also parts where he is tending and caring for the plants. The bits that are tended are helped by the bits that are wild. The parts that are wild help insects like ladybirds, who in turn eat the aphids which damage the plants. 
there's a kind of interdependence. We do have a vine. It just looks barren at the moment. I now know that vines need great care and attention. In Peter's garden, he provides this care and attention. Without him, the vines would grow wild, get pests or diseases, and ultimately be destroyed, resulting in a poor harvest. I do have to say that although the grapes last year were small, they were very sweet. It isn't a case of micromanaging the whole garden. It's a case of caring for the vines. In our passage, God is described as the gardener and refers to Jesus as the vine and us as the branches. What a beautiful picture that is. We are influenced greatly by our environment. Just as the great harvest depends on many elements to thrive, sunshine, rain, food, good soil and good drainage. It's important to be careful where we plant ourselves and where we take root. It is so much easier to grow to spiritual maturity and bear much fruit if we're planted in, the, in conditions where the nutrients are ideal. A place where you're loved and in, uh, supported and encouraged to grow in your faith. And we would like to think that of St Paul's as such a place. The fruit of the vine takes time. From the time it is planted to the time it bears fruit. Could be two or three years. In this period, the only growth is the branches and leaves. Similarly, our spiritual fruit takes time. We strive to become better Christians, but this takes time. God is doing a work within us, but we, we want to see that fruit immediately. Real change and spiritual growth doesn't happen overnight. We need the gardener because we can't change ourselves. Jesus says, abide in me. We are the branches attached to the vine. All we have to do is remain in Christ. Like my husband Peter loves his garden, so God loves us. The process of growing and being transformed comes naturally as we listen to God through prayer, worship, reading the Bible, caring for others, loving as God loves. The branches of the vine grow because quite simply, they remain attached to the main part of the plant. Grapes don't have to strive to become juicy and sweet. They just stay attached closely to the vine from which they derive their nourishment. <coughs> Only mature branches of the vine produce fruit. It takes time to bear fruit. Once we've borne the fruit of the Spirit, we will then be able to become a light to others. God's call on our lives will become clearer, but we will first have to bear fruit within ourselves. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Pruning is critical of both humans and grapes. Vines must be severely pruned each year to grow stronger instead of weaker. God's pruning in our lives can be painful, but it allows God to get closer to the essence of who we really are, who we were made to be, and to make space for him in our lives. You could think of it as 
getting rid of what's unnecessary so all our available energy and resources are focused on what is really important, God's work here on earth. Unlike vines, we can actually do some effective self-pruning. We always hope for a good harvest, but never despair if we have a poor one. One poor harvest doesn't mean the vines will not produce next year. The natural cycle of birth, life, death and renewal create a theme of hope and resurrection which we see again and again in nature and in the Bible. A poor harvest might just be a wake-up call to move closer to God, to pay more attention to our environment and make sure we're abiding in his light and love. Like the branches, the fruit, like the branches, the fruit we must give is witness to Christ in our lives. After Jesus ascended to the Father, the task of the disciples is to continue to proclaim the gospel in words and in deeds by bearing witness to his love, the fruit to be born of the love. Abiding in Jesus, we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and we can do God's work here on earth. When we think about fruit, we think about the things here at St Paul's that are bearing fruit, through the fruit that we are bearing. Joy, Jam Club, Youth Group, Prayer Walking and Food Bank and many other things. The vine is known by its fruit, the grapes. Let us at St Paul's be known by the fruit of our lives. To point people to the true gardener, who through his grace loves us, loves everyone, whoever they are, and with some tender loving care and pruning, can transform lives and bear amazing fruit here in Parson Cross. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the true vine and we are your branches. By your grace and through the Holy Spirit, keep us connected to you so that we might produce fruit that glorifies God. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you want to join us here for our service, it's at half past ten. Um, and I hope you uh, have a, a really good week. Thank you for watching.